Parts get delivered, Raptors get delivered, and a weather storm shuts down operations temporarily. Today, on location at Starbase. Headlining today is the fact that yesterday I missed an important piece of news. When you're down here, there are so many things happening, so many places to be looking. Sometimes it's difficult to keep track of just everything. But on Tuesday, Mary from Boca Chica Gal spotted a new Raptor with a brand new naming convention and honestly one of the cutest and coolest ones that I've seen in a while. This Raptor is called R2B2. Right, that's a B instead of a D, named obviously after the cute little robot from Star Wars. It's kind of fun to see SpaceX engineers be so quirky and free-flowing with their naming conventions. This Raptor is joining a growing fleet of Raptors down here at Starbase, which will be used very shortly for the orbital test that's coming up soon. As you can see here, it's raining right now. That's how dedicated I am to doing this show. But that hasn't been the only rain that we've seen. Yesterday evening, actually, there were heavy showers and even lightning strikes here on the Starbase location, halting all operations for about an hour. It's, un it's uncanny to see the whole production site completely empty of people and quiet, because this place is just a 24-7 hive of production activity. Now, thankfully, no one was hurt, and everything got back to schedule fairly soon. But it's kind of cool, because SpaceX got to use, for the first time, that new speaker system that we saw them install yesterday morning. Uh, that new speaker system was used to give the all clear and the evacuation call, and it's much louder and easier to hear from inside cars or next to loud machinery. So good on SpaceX for improving that. RGV Aerial Photography posted pictures yesterday of the launch site here, and from the sky, you can see that uh, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. Uh, it looks like SpaceX is in the final process of assembling the pieces for the orbital catch arm that will be catching the BFR booster. Now it looks like that yellow piping section is not involved. I still don't know what on earth that yellow thing is for, so please let me down in the comments down below what, what you think it is. SpaceX has been delivering a lot of gray pieces of metal, which look like they can be easily assembled into some kind of structure that will be mounted on the top of that orbital launch tower. We've also noticed a ton of new piping sections, even some insulated piping going in, and it's kind of cool to see it's all just being built out as we stand here. That GSC tank that we were saying might get moved yesterday didn't get moved, however, the crane is still attached to the GSC tank, and it looks like crews are working inside the tank, so I'm not sure what exactly the crane is doing attached to the GSC tank, but it's still there. And finally, SpaceX crews finally complete the concrete pad that's sitting directly behind me. This is just a little piece of concrete that I'm sure is going to have some equipment, or maybe it'll be a kind of roadway in the future, but it's just cool to see how fast SpaceX can put this up. They started pouring this about 24 hours ago, and they've already cut the lines in the concrete, and it is, it is done. So, we'll go ahead and go SpaceX for use your fast cadence, and it's just super exciting to see. And that's it for Today at Starbase. Be sure to like and subscribe, and follow us on Twitter at Today at Starbase. Godspeed.